Thank you very much. We're all here safe and sound for another game of Countdown. Now, we, as you know, we've had some fantastic games of Countdown in this uh, special series in the quest for our supreme champion, but we've got a really big one, I feel, coming up uh, as the next half hour. So without more ado, let me introduce Carol. Yes, and for exactly the same reason, I feel particularly old, as I'm sure you do too, Richard, today. Well, we do today, indeed. We old and privileged. Let us meet our Supremes for today, Michael Wareham and Alan Saldana. <laughs> well, it's hello again to Michael, who lives in Edinburgh, actually, though he comes from uh, Aberdeenshire. He's now 55 and uh, he's married and is a retired headmaster and he's a former Times Crossword National Champion. Now that's how he was in Countdown back in 1990 when he became the champion of Series 19 by defeating guess who? Yes, fellow Scot Gino Corr in the final. You saw Gino of course a week or two ago. Now Michael has a record of seven wins out of nine. He says he now works for one or two charities and is trying to write a book, but today he's trying to book his place in the group semi-final. So welcome back and good luck to you, a great champion, Michael Wareham. <laughs> and here he is again, perhaps, quite honestly, our best-known contestant over the years. Let us spare his blushes, though, Alan Saldana from Chelsea. Now, Alan is now 19 and he's doing an economics degree at Jesus College, Cambridge. Well, as you can tell, he is about twice as tall as when he first appeared in 1988. He just loves that picture, doesn't he? At the age of 10, remember, when he was a pupil at Hill House School. Now, he stunned us all with an incredible 10-game unbeaten run before he was defeated in the final of Series 15 by Dick Green. His record stands at 10 wins out of 12 in the ordinary series, but you may recall him winning two special games which we held to celebrate our 1,000th and our 1,500th edition. He's also, he was also national Scrabble champion in 1993, and he's currently the highest rated Scrabble player in the country. So it's very good to see him back, Alan Saldana. <laughs> now, uh, last time out, our guardian of the dictionary has got little change over our contestants, uh, though he did manage to come up with the eight-letter winner, Centavo. Centavo's a uh, small Spanish uh, coin. Now, this is his last time today, but even though he's a peso mist, he hopes to be back. But in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. welcome back, Senor Barry Cryer with ah, Senorita Susie evening. Dent. Good evening. So, the stage is set for this uh, game between these two champions. Michael Wareham and Alan Saldana at stake, of course, a place in the semi-final of this group. So, Michael, off you go. Consonant, please, girl. Thank you very much, Michael. T. And another. M. And a third. And L. And a vowel. I. And another vowel. Another vowel. A. And another vowel. O. Consonant, please. S. Consonant, please. F. Vowel. And vowel. Thank you, Michael. And I. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Michael. Here we go, round one. Six. Six offered, Alan. Six. Six. Alan, six. Floats. Yes, floats there for six. Yours, Michael? Floats. Floats. Okay, well, floats, Barry? Floats is fine, but we can moot. Flotsam. Yep. From float to flotsam. Yes. It's fine. Flotsam. Yep, for seven. Flotsam and jetsam. Indeed. Yep. Great double act. <laughs> They were. No, they, they were. were. Weren't they, Barry? they were. Richard remembers. I do. He told me about them. <laughs> Flotsam and Jepsum. Well, yes. they're pianists and sort of like the Western brothers. That's right. Like you and Willie Rushton. Great. Yes, very similar. Very similar. Good. Six and six off the mark straight away. Now, uh, letters from you, Alan. Can I have a consonant, please, Carol? 
T. And another one, please. H. And another one. And G. And a vowel. O. And another one. And a vowel. U. And another one, please. E. Can I have a consonant, please? N. And another one. R. And a vowel, please. And a vowel. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. And that's I. All right, the first selection made by Alan, and the clock starts now. What do you say, Alan? Eight. Pardon? Eight. An eight. An eight is offered here, Michael. Seven. Seven, which is Michael. Toughen. Yes, toughen there for seven. No, an eight. Rooting. Rooting. Oh. Yep. Absolutely fine. Or even routing, I suppose, but rooting, yes, Very is good. there. Yep. For Very good. Eight points. Well done. There it is. Rooting. Follow that. Equal that. Don't can't. equal that. Can't. <laughs> can't. Can't. <laughs> no good. Okay. No, no. All right. So now we move on to round three and back to you, Michael. Consonant, please. Y. And another. Another one, Michael. L. And another. R. And another. G. Vowel. O. Vowel. E. Vowel. A. Consonant, please. M. And another consonant. Another consonant. And J. Thank you. So round three in the frame. 30 seconds is the game. That's it. Michael, how do you do? Six. You got six. How did you do, Alan? Six. You got six. What's yours, Michael? Morale. Yes, so morale is uh, high, we hope. And uh, Alan? Morale as well. Morale, yes. That's true. Yep. That's absolutely right. Morale. Fine. Fine. Very good. Good. Yeah. There's well. also jailer in ah. there. The old spelling. With a G. G. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, three letters rounds gone. Now, scores are 12 and 20. And we'll move to the numbers, please. And Alan, this is your chance to choose the numbers. Could I have four from the top, please, Carol? Four from the top. Yes, please. And okay. two from the second row. <laughs> you don't really want the two, do you? But, uh, OK, we'll have two from the second row. Okie dokie, are you ready? Three and five, and I think you know what's coming. 75, 50, 100, and 25. <laughs> I'll go and weep in a corner because the target is 911. All right, well, 911 is the target set. 30 seconds, of course, as always, the time. A stinker or was it a stinker? Let's have a look. 911, Alan? 910. Oh, wow, that's one away. What do you say, Michael? He's got 10 better than I have. 900. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> well, 900 is pretty good, although it would have been out of contention, I suppose. But yeah. uh, let's look at 910 then. 100 over 25 is 4. Is 4 times 3 is 12. Times 75. Oh, I see. You've gone that way. Okay, it's 900. 50 by 5 is 10. Yeah. And add it on. 
and add that on 910. Yeah, well, good. That's seven point. Now, what do you say? Well, I did it. Uh, I actually got <laughs> 910, but I uh, did 75 divided by 25 is three times three and multiplied that by the 100 to get the 900. So mm. same method, but um, no closer. OK, well, obviously a difficult one, that. But uh, well done to both of you, Carol and Alan, for getting within one of it. So that's seven points to you. So 27 for Alan, 12 to uh, Michael. And uh, into the break we go with Barry. See a pin and pick it up. And all day you'll have a pin. <laughs> Said by my old friend Roy Castle, who told a story when he first hit stardom at the London Palladium years ago. He was very young. He used to dash up Argyle Street, down Oxford Circus Tube, and go to Marylebone, and then get a train to Denham, where he was then living, a late-night train, an after-midnight train, one of the old compartments facing each other with the old swing door and everything. And he said, they were all on this last train, and in got the classic city businessman, bowler hat, umbrella, briefcase, and evening paper, put all his stuff in the rack, sat down, went to sleep. The train set off, suddenly clunk, stopped between stations. This man jumped up, got all his stuff out of the rack, opened the door on the embankment side and stepped out. And Roy said, we were all very British, nobody said anything. The door was swinging, and then it, the umbrella came back on its own, the briefcase and the bowler hat. Then his right hand, then his left hand, then his face, a burgeoning black eye, scarred, covered in muck from the embankment, looking very embarrassed, climbed back in the compartment, picked up all his stuff, looked round and said, you must think I'm a terrible fool, <laughs> and stepped out the other side. <laughs> Well, I'd tell you why he probably did that. I haven't heard that tale before, but I, he probably thought, he probably thought the station was, when well known to you, Mornington Crescent. Mornington Crescent, which has been closed for some time. It's Moribund at the moment. Is it? Moribund Crescent, yes, yes. Poor old thing. Why? Has it been axed? Uh, no, it's endless uh, renovations and refurbishments, whatever. I was once delayed terribly at uh, Leicester Square Tube Station in London because one of the escalators was working and hundreds of people gathered to watch. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, that's it. We're going down now for a few minutes, but we'll be coming out, we hope, for part two of this game between Michael Wareham and Alan Sandana very soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> I wondered how it would affect me. You hear stories about people going out of control. I said to myself, don't rush into anything. Spend a bit of the money on something you really like. So I bought two jars of Mellow Bird's coffee because I really like that lovely, mild taste and it might help me decide what to spend the rest of the money on. Oh, well, I did win £25. <laughs> The ultimate street quiz on video. Favourite memories will come flooding back. Coronation Street Trivial Pursuit, out now on video. Those fish flakes look suspiciously like me barbecue flavour Pringles. Buy one, get one free. Neutrogena's new dandruff shampoo, so effective it lasts longer, so you use it less often. And I do. At last, a dandruff shampoo that lasts. No coal with sauce makes a deliciously creamy curry. They've improved the balance of spices. So now it's even more mouth-watering. And you get that full rich flavour in just 20 minutes. It's the best tasting coma this side of Watford. Cracking Ruby. <laughs> Home pride curry sauces. Authentic flavours from all around the world. A lack of confidence can come from a phobia. Being frightened. Snakes. Or spiders. 
and a fear of small spaces. But that's one phobia we can help you with. New Citroen Saxo is available with power steering, specially engineered to give maximum power at a slower speed. And meter mate phobia? Incurable. And uh, back again for this uh, quarter-final of this group, and we find Michael Wareham there on 12 and Alan Saldana on 27. Five rounds to go, of course, as we start part two with the letters game and Alan. Can I have a constant, please? Thank you, Alan. Y. And another one, please. F. And another one, please. And N. A vowel. U. Another one, please. E. And another one, please. O. Can I have a consonant? P. Another one, please. S. And another consonant. And D. Thanks, folks. Here we go on this one. say seven seven for Alan and Michael to six which is Michael pounds pounds yes now seven fondues fondues <laughs> lovely word in it fine yes yeah lovely word silly things aren't they fondue sets yeah I've I had about ten I've thrown them all away they're <laughs> ridiculous yeah fondues but good word very good yeah anything else no we yes. dipped in and got fondues yeah. as well <laughs> <laughs> it's rubbing off Richard yes well Another 14 years, you'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, so Michael sadly stays on 12, and you move on to 34, Alan, and we now come to you, Michael, for some more letters, please. Consonant, please. Thank you. D. And another. R. And another. S. And another, please. R. And another. And another one. T. Vowel, please. I. And another. A. And another. A. And another. And another I. All right, well, a couple of A's there, and a couple of I's as well, so a lot to go at. Here we go. to you Michael six again All right well you like your sixes <laughs> now what's the maestro got seven a seven the six being triads triads yes um, maestro diarist <laughs> diarist no problem with that one yeah that's fine yes diarist yeah. as was mrs. Dale that's right. one of the great diarists of our time a diarist good flotsam and jetsam mrs. Dale <laughs> my goodness me <laughs> Back to the future we're yeah, doing. At least I'd heard of Chris Evans, uh, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, so what's that? That's seven for you. So that's 41 and 12 as we now come to the final three rounds of this. And the last letters game is you, Alan. Can I have a constant, please? Thank you, Alan. D. And another one, please. V. And another one. H. And a vowel. A. And another one, please. O. And another one. I. Can I have a consonant? Of course. N. And another one, please. S. And a vowel. And a vowel. Thank you. And E. 
Thank you. That's the final selection of letters for this game anyhow. Here we go. Great, what have you got? I've got vanished. Uh, vanished, yes, yeah. Alan? Vanished. Yes, okay. Sure, that's there. Okay, that's very good. Uh, eight letter word. Vanished. Well done. So that's a nice way to finish uh, the letters. Um, eight for each, of course. Uh, so we move on to the next round 20 and 49. And now then, Michael, your chance to get your revenge with the numbers. Some chance, I think. <laughs> uh, one big one. And five from anywhere you like. And five oh. small numbers, yeah. thank you. Three, four, and five. Okay. We have nine and ten, eight and two, three and fifty. And the target this time is 744. Yeah, okay, 744. The time starts now. So 744, Michael. I thought I had it, but I did it all wrong. I used the two twice. Right, OK. Uh, Alan? 744, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> he only thinks. <laughs> well, you never know. Let's have a look then. 744. 2 times 50 is 100. OK, 2 times 50 gives you 100. 10 minus 3 is 7. Yep. Is Subtract. 7? Subtract. Yes. 93 <laughs> times yep. 8. And multiply by 8. Richard knew this all along. 744. Four. Yes, I did. Well done, Alan. <laughs> right, great stuff, great stuff. So, 59 and uh, 20 there. So, let's go on now to the conundrum. Let's see uh, how the old conundrum brain is working with Alan and Michael now after all these years. Let's see if they're as sharp as ever. Here, let's uh, go for it now. Please now reveal today's countdown conundrum. Is this something I said? One second to say. Aimlessly. Aimlessly is what it is. <laughs> well, what do you say to that? I mean, uh, the magic is still there, isn't it? A marvellous performance against. Uh, no mean achiever with Michael Wareham, of course. I mean, it's not, a, not an easy game by any means. So with, with 69 points and a place in the semi-final, Alan Saldana. <laughs> well, we say farewell to you, Michael. I suppose, in all honesty, uh, well, I bet you enjoyed having to come back in all this way down from Scotland. Trepidation when indeed. you found you were playing Alan. Yes. <laughs> Well, I was told before I came down, I wondered if I need bother, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's very good to see you again, and I know that you were a very popular winner in your, in your time, and I think a lot of people felt it's very appropriate that uh, the dictionary should go to, uh, to the home of a headmaster, which was nice. Oh, so you. they're presumably in pride of place, are they still? They are indeed. Okay. Uh, Michael, well, we haven't got the dictionaries, but we've got this trophy that we hope that you'll find somewhere for that as well. So, Michael Wareham, <laughs> goodbye to you. Thank you. And so tomorrow we have, of course, uh, uh, we have our first semi-final, which is between these two people. Who's the first one? I'm just trying to work it out here. There he is, young David Trace. Uh, he's our first semi-finalist. And uh, Richard Campbell, there he is, uh, the Samson of our time with his hair shorn, Richard Campbell. OK, so there's two young men fighting out the semi tomorrow. Uh, Barry, you won't be here, sadly. I won't be here, sadly, no. I thoroughly enjoyed being here, though. It's been rather like my honeymoon. 
long, arduous, and slightly baffling. <laughs> <laughs> I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Okay, Barry Cryer, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, Susie will be, uh, won't be here tomorrow either, will you, Susie? No, Just I won't be. Catherine will be here. Back to Oxford. Time. Catherine Stokes will be here tomorrow. But, so you'll be here tomorrow, Catherine. I will be, and I've just worked out what you did with those fondue sets. Because you gave them to me as presents at both of my weddings. <laughs> which... <laughs> I've forgot... still got one left, Carol, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There is no more. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs>